It's amazing when seniors come to church because, you know, they have so many excuses that they could make up for not coming to church, 12th graders, right? But, man, you guys want to worship God, you guys want to grow in Christ, you guys come to church, that's awesome. All right, let's go to the Word of God, Jeremiah. Jeremiah is my nephew's name. Jeremiah. Chapter 17, verses 5 to 8. Are you ready to read the Word of God together? Yes. Ready? Begin. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who depends on flesh for his strength, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. He will be like a bush in the wastelands. He will not see prosperity when it comes. He will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in Him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Amen. The Bible passage here talks about two different types of people, right? One, one group of people, one person trusts in man, trusts in the physical things of the world, and the other person trusts in God, in the Word of God. And we already know the differences. So, I mean, I'm not going to spend too much time on the first part, you know, cursed is the one who trusts in man. The Bible doesn't have to convince us of that because we already experience it in our everyday life, right? When people betray you, talk about you behind your back, don't keep their promises. I mean, we experience it all the time. When we try to trust in a person for our salvation, for our life, we will always be disappointed. We'll always feel like we're being cursed when we try to trust in man. It just, just doesn't work, you know? When, when my, our family, we immigrated to America in 1979, and uh, I was a cute little boy back then, uh, and, you know, we had lots of struggles, lots of problems. And when we went to uh, America, after several years of being there, um, people used to say this, like Korean immigrants used to tell other Korean immigrants, don't trust Korean immigrants, right? I mean, think about it. You're, you're, you can't speak English very well. You go to a new land. You immigrate to a new land. You're not very rich. You don't have a lot of money. So you need a lot of help. But since you can't speak the language, who do you get help from? Other Koreans who have been there for a long time, right? But they said, don't trust other Koreans because they will, you know, uh, and, but my dad is kind of naive, right? He says, no, that's not true. I, I've met some really good people and things like that. And so he would trust them and in the end get burned by these people, okay? And it's not just Koreans living in America. It's just everybody. We cannot trust people. We can't put our trust, our ultimate trust in people. It just doesn't work. I told you this story before. When we started our church, my dad's a pastor, and in America, after several years of being there, we started our own church, and we used to um, rent a church, a little church building um, that was used by, you know, Americans, white people, and they, they had their service in the morning, and, you know, they're, they're like, they're quick. They go to church, they have their service, la, 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 and they're done, and they're gone, right? And so then, my dad went and asked, can we borrow this church building in the afternoon on Sundays because you guys are like gone by 12 o'clock, right? So can we use it? And they said, yeah, sure, you know, pay us rent and then you can use it. And so we started to have our worship there, right? Our youth group, as you know, was me and my two sisters. My third sister was too young, so she couldn't join the youth group, too bad. Um, our adult congregation was around 20 people. Right? But most of them were cousins or, or somehow related to us. And uh, that, that's how the church went. But we struggled. We, we, we tried hard. My, my parents did. I didn't. My parents struggled. They tried hard to build, um, to build a good church. Not a building, but, you know, the people. And 
the church started to grow a little bit, maybe 30 people, 40 people. Our youth group doubled in size. We had six people, okay? Uh, and, and we were just, wow, this is great. And then these two people uh, came out of nowhere. These two people, one was really good at singing. Oh, she was a soprano. And the other one, uh, he's like a slick-looking guy. You know, he's like his hair slicked back, and, and he's like cool. And he actually was a conductor. And we didn't really have a choir. Our choir was, you know, the pianist was my mom, uh, who hadn't played piano in 25 years. Uh, and, you know, the director was, our, I think, a cousin of mine. And, and it was just terrible, right? But then this lady comes out of nowhere, and she's, oh, and she brings her two kids. So our youth group is growing, right? And then this other guy comes, and he's not married or whatever. And so he comes, and he's young, and he's, and he, oh, wow. And after a few months, the lady says, I know somebody who is retiring from his church. Their church is moving, and they're selling their church building for really, really cheap. Oh, in my opinion, because that's the dream of anybody who plants a church, to have their own worship center, to have their own place of worship, right? That's a dream. And we said, oh, and, but, you know, things are kind of sneaky. You know, this lady and this guy, they were a little too close. You know what I mean? I mean, they came at different times from different pe places. She's married and has two kids. And this guy, he just, I think, fresh from, maybe not fresh from Korea, but, but, you know, but they seem to, like, get along really well. <clears throat> but my parents didn't see any of that. All they heard was, there's an opportunity to buy a church building, to have our very own church, and they're going to sell it for very, very cheap. They even showed us where it was, right? And so then we would drive by that place and always look at it. Oh, that, I mean, it's tiny. It's a small place, but still our own place of worship. And then they started to say things like, uh, well, the lawyer's fees for transferring the property is going to be so-and-so. You should probably uh, buy that, that senior pastor some gifts because he's being so nice to us and things like that, and we need money for this and this and then that, that. And, you know... You start kind of getting suspicious. But my parents, they, we were struggling so much, and they, they really wanted this place. Thankfully, thankfully, we found out their scheme before we handed over a lot of money. Or, or We found out that it was all a lie and that these two people knew each other from the beginning. And that they, what they do is they go to these small churches that are struggling, that need help, and they, they, they swindle them out of money, and, they just, and then they take off and go somewhere else. I don't think the kids knew about it. The kids, they just think, oh, we're moving churches again? Like that. You cannot trust in man. And we experience things like this all the time when we get betrayed by people. I really hurt our parents a lot. My parents are really devastated, you know, so then they leave the church, so our youth group shrinks because the two kids leave, right? And, and we don't have a choir director anymore, and, and we don't have this awesome soprano anymore. That was painful. We can't trust in men. Verse 6 is very interesting. He will be like a bush, per, a person who trusts in God, whose heart turns away, or, or, or who trusts in men, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He will be like a bush in the wastelands. He will not see prosperity when it comes. We get blinded when we trust in men, when our hearts are far from the Lord. And when we focus on what's right in front of us all the time, we get blinded. Ham, can you turn off that heater there? Just, just press Nambang and turn it off. Thanks. Yeah, he, he's on his uh, break from the military service. And, uh, yeah, and he's useful. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. When we take our eyes away from God, even when prosperity comes, even when things are good, we don't recognize it. We don't see it. That's how lame we become. That's how dumb we become when our hearts are away from God. But I want to focus on verse 7 and 8. Oh, but blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in Him. When we trust in God and our confidence is in God, we are automatically blessed from that moment. We are blessed. 
You don't, you don't agree with me? You guys are like, uh-huh. I'm like, yeah, we're blessed. We're automatically blessed when we, wor- when we worship God, when we have a relationship with God, when we trust in the Lord, we are automatically blessed. Uh-huh. That's sad, you guys. You guys don't experience God's blessings in your life? Every day I look at my kids, I feel so blessed. When I see Sharon and when I see Aaron, I love the fact that their names rhyme. Sharon and Aaron, all right? I I get so blessed every time I see my kids. I get so blessed every time I see you guys. When I spend time with our STEM teachers, man, that's such a blessing in my life. Man, when I see, when I see, you know, I always leave out my wife, but, you know, she's a blessing too, right? She's like the silent, uh, she's not so silent at home, but, you know, she's, she's like the silent person, you know, the support. She's always there, right? Um, I'm so blessed by all the things. And all of this was possible because I trust in God. With my marriage, I trusted in God. I mean, seriously, when, when you get married, you're supposed to have stuff before you get married. You're supposed to have, like, some money saved up so you could have a house to live in, right? You're supposed to plan all these things out and whatever, and you're looking for your soulmate, right? The person that's like, oh, my soulmate. Uh, you know, oh, we agree about everything together, and we, 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 we like all the things together. We have so many things in common. And, oh, my soulmate. And you're supposed to, like, know each other for many, many you know, years. And then you, you finally, you know, you're, you catch the eye. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, he's just a friend. Oh, she's just a friend. And then one day, you know, ooh-hoo. And then, whoa, right? And it's supposed to happen like this. None of that happened. I had to trust completely in God. I mean, man, when I first came to Korea in 1997, a young man, 25 years old, what happened with most people back in the late 90s, early 2000s, guys from America, Korean Americans, would come to Korea, and within a year or two, they already have a girlfriend, they already have a fiancé, and then within three or four years, they're already married. I came to Korea in 1997, and I didn't get married until 2004. Like, I... I like, oh my, I'm serious. People that I knew, my friends and people that they would come to Korea and then within a couple of months, they're already dating. You know, they're 25, 26 years old. So, you know, it's natural. So I was unnatural. And I was, I felt so, ugh, you, guys, you guys don't know what it's like to be 30, 31, 32, and single. I have no, like, See, like Song Sun Singing, right? He's single. And that guy, he's, he's what? I just found out he's like 34 or something like that, right? So he's not so young anymore. When I first met him, he was still in his 20s, right? But, but he's not so young anymore. But here's the thing. The difference between me and him is he's good looking, right? All he has to do is just try. And, and, and you know, he'll, he'll get. But for me, I had nothing I am short, fat, and ugly. Every time I say, every time I say this, sometime during the day, somebody sends me a text message. Pastor, I don't think you're ugly. You know, don't, I'm not looking for compassion right now. Okay, I'm just telling you reality as it is. Okay, and I had no future. I had to trust in God. So then I just just laid it. You know, I, I'm spending too much time on this, but this is important. Um, <laughs> Walking in the streets of Seoul, there's so many pretty people, right? Guys, right? Right? I mean, when I was 25, 26, and then I'll walk by and there's a girl walks by or a group of girls walk by. Or, you know, if you want to see a lot of girls, where do you go? Cafe Bene, right? You just go to Cafe Bene, right? They didn't have it back then, but back then it was Burger King. Okay, you go to Burger King, it's all girls, okay? And, uh, and, and, and I sit at Burger King, and then there's all these girls, right? And how come there are all these girls, but none of them are for me, right? You know, when the weather gets warmer, and it's springtime, and then you see all the couples walking around, you know, and everybody's holding hands with a girl. Even girls are holding hands with a girl. <laughs> and, and, you know, and I'm the only one. I'm the only one that doesn't have that. <sighs> But 
beautiful uh, right now. I have a be- uh, do, do you know how we, we got? I, I, came, I, I, was just, I was with my roommate at my house, and uh, I was getting ready to go out, took a shower, came out, and then I was, you know, dressed, and I was ready to go out. And as I was ready, waiting, as I was leaving the house, my roommate says, oh, by the way, there's somebody we want, I want to introduce you to. And I said, oh, really? Who? And it was my wife. But he didn't know her. His fiance knew her. And so it's like, like, you know, like, yeah, it's very complex, okay? But then somehow God brought it all together, and, and, and we met. And after our first date, you know, my friend asked, so what do you think of her? And I said, man, she's fantastic. She's great. What did she say about me? And he says, oh, she says you're not bad, okay? <laughs> uh, I could have been devastated, right? She broke up with me twice, right? And, and, and so... You just trust in God. <laughs> Guys, let me give you a hint. The second time she broke up with me, I said to her, the first time she broke up with me, and then I saw her at my roommate's wedding, you know, the fiancé that, you know, I saw her at the wedding, you know, I saw her and I'm like, oh, right? And then that night I, I texted her. I shouldn't have, but I, you know, uh, it was good seeing you today. I, I probably shouldn't have texted you. You don't have to answer. You know, they hate it when people say you don't have to answer. That means you have to answer, right? Uh, I say you don't have to answer, and then so, and then a few minutes later, she texts back. She goes, "It was good seeing you too. I probably shouldn't have replied, right?" <laughs> and, and then, and then it got going again, and it was great, and you know, but but then the second time she broke with me, I, I broke up with me. I was so cool. I said, you're going to break up with me again? She says, yes. I said, well, you know, this is it then. I'm never going to call you again. I'm never going to contact you again. I'm never going to. And then she says, yeah, I know. And then we broke up again. And this is it. And I said, God, if this is what you want, this is, this is what you want, God. So, and I said, I'm not going to pursue her anymore and whatever. And then it turns out later, she pursued me, right? <laughs> Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, (laughs) whose confidence is in him, not in yourself. Because I had zero confidence in myself. What do I have that girls want? Can I tell you? Nothing. I have nothing. As I was, you know, in Korea, I was 25, 26 years old. I would look at college girls and, you know, woo. But then when I became 28, 29, 30, I realized, oh, man, college girls don't go for guys this old anymore, right? And, and I was, it was a crisis. You don't understand. All right. Check this out, verse 8. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Here's the thing. When we trust in God, it doesn't mean that drought doesn't come. It doesn't mean that the hot weather doesn't come. For trees, you need sunlight, but you also need water. You need uh, moderate temperatures. If things get too hot or too dry, if there's a drought, the tree dies. But not a tree that is planted by streams of water, whose roots are right at the stream. Okay, so that when the heat comes, when the drought comes, we do not fear. We are blessed when we trust in God, but that doesn't mean our life is always smooth, right? For those of you who are Christian athletes, you know, you guys, before you play your game, you always pray, right? Oh, God, I want to glorify your name by scoring four goals during this soccer game. You know, you want to glorify God but through all these things, but you know what? There are times when you lose. There are times when you get hurt. There are times when there's that one guy that just never passes you the ball, right? I mean, there are times when things get just frustrating. There are times when the other team plays dirty. There are times when, you know, and, and, and oh, man, But the Bible says, it, the tree, us, does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green, even when the heat comes. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. We base our life so much on our circumstances, it's disgusting. It's pitiful, actually. How much we base, our, we base what we do on. Uh, depending on our circumstances, right? So we're like a tree, right? And in a time of drought, can a tree bear fruit? No. And so that's our excuse. 
When we're not bearing fruit as Christians, we're not, when we're not living the Christian life, we say, well, it's because it's a time of drought right now. I'm spiritually dry, or God hasn't given me opportunities to glorify His name. God hasn't given me enough money. God hasn't given me, you know, good enough friends. God didn't give me a good enough church, or God didn't do these things for me, so I can't bear fruit right now. I have too many problems in my life. I have too many troubles in my life. I'm having relationship problems. I'm having problems with my parents. I really need to study, and and I'm getting bad grades. So we have all these excuses uh, that we use to say, I'm in the middle of a drought, But the Bible says it has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. You know why? Because the source of water isn't the rain that comes down. The source of water is the stream that you're planted by. You guys understand what I'm saying? Don't wait for your circumstances to get better, for your situation to change. Because that's a time of drought that we're supposed to overcome. It doesn't mean we can't bear fruit. For a tree planted whose roots are at the streams of water, whether or not we bear fruit doesn't depend on the weather. It doesn't depend on the weather. We bear fruit all the time. Stop trusting in your abilities, your your physical, you know, Verse 5 again, cursed is the one who trusts in man who depends on flesh for his strength. When you get to be my age, you understand you can't depend on your body for strength. You know, the knees. What was it? When did it, when did it rain a little bit? Was it Thursday. Or something, my knees were hurting. One of the kids, or or Wednesday, or somebody goes, Hey, is it because it rained? (laughs) Your knees hurt? (laughs) We can't trust in our bodies, in our flesh, in our minds, in our intellect. We can't. That's not how we live a faithful life in Christ. We trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. And we have our confidence in Him. And we can never be far away from the water. We need to send our roots to the stream, to the water. You guys already know this. You just have a tough time actually doing it, right? Trust in God. When there are times when you, when you feel uneasy, when there are times when you feel like, oh, I can't really trust God, or there are times you feel like, oh, I got to do something, I, I got to do something, I can't trust God in this area, that's when you need to trust God. Sounds like a, a paradox, sounds like an oxymoron, right? The times when you can't pray, that's when you really have to pray. You just need to overcome that thing just once. And that will open up a whole new experience of of faith in God. Just just overcome it just once. Don't give in every time to hardships and temptations. Don't use the drought as an excuse. You just overcome it once. And then once you do that, well, a whole new, it's just a whole new thing that opens up. You guys need to get there. We can't get there if we trust in ourselves and when we trust in people. Let's put our trust in God, that he will take care of us when we are faithful to him. Let's pray. We thank you, Lord, for your your word, um, just the ways in which you encourage us so much um, Lord, sometimes life is really tough. Um, it seems like many times, or most of the time, life is tough. Uh, and God, there are times when we were betrayed by people, people that we really trusted. Um, Lord, we pray that we would put our trust in you and, and in your word, that we would have confidence not in what we can do or, or, or who we know or what kind of abilities we have, but, but we would have confidence in you. Um, confidence knowing that we are children of God 
and that God, you will always, um, you'll always protect us, and you'll always uh, take care of us. Help us have that kind of confidence as we live in this terrible world, um, full of so many dangers. Lord God, please protect all of our kids, um, protect our hearts and their bodies. May we always seek after you and trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray.